Hey, what's good gamers? Aquilina, of course. Welcome uh, back to each and every one of you. Now, I will not fault you if you thought after last week we're surely done talking about Ubisoft. If you thought to yourself, you know what, there's no way that any of this can ever get worse. Ubisoft is declining at a massive rate. Their uh, share price has fallen by more than 50% in the last two months. And it continues to drop, although it is experiencing a little bit of an uptick uh, on early morning trade. It's probably going to go down again as a result of just internal pressures mounting. You now have the board of directors that are calling for internal reviews within the company due to just bad things happening. And you might be saying, but, you know, we're done. There's nothing more to discuss here. How can things possibly get worse? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if anyone ever tells you that you should not hate on uh, these companies, you should not hate on these studios because there's a bunch of people that work there that have nothing to do with any of these issues, and, and really, you should feel sorry for them. I want you to understand that you do not hate these people nearly enough because you have no idea how much these people hate you. I promise you that. You have no idea. So today's story actually comes from the monetization director. Yes, that is a real job within Ubisoft. But this is the monetization director of Ubisoft that came out, uh, this was last week, Friday, that came out with a post in which he basically laments uh, the video gamers and hates on the video gamers. So I'm going to read through this uh, in the interest of fairness. Stewie or Stevie Chassard or whatever the hell his name is, but I rarely post on social media, but today I am sad, ashamed, and sad. Well, Stewie, why could this be? The gaming industry is rough at the moment. Really? Not for indie companies. They're doing great. Uh, in fact, if you brought, if you're the developer of games like Baldur's Gate, CD Projekt Red, Mana Lords, Helldivers, uh, Stellar Blade, what, there's a bunch of other games as well that I can't even remember because there have been so many good games. But if you're one of the studios that made those games, life's been great in the gaming industry at the moment. Uh, we all know it. No, Stewie, I just showed you how we don't all know this. But anyways, but seeing how gamers react on social media, wishing ill fate to companies and people alike is sad, and not only towards Ubisoft. Have you ever, Stewie, Ask yourself a very fundamental question. Who are these people that the gamers are hating on? The, the gamers, excuse me. Maybe we can draw some connections. Let's see. We hate on Activision. We hate on EA. We hate on Ubisoft. We hate on Bioware. Uh, Bioware, part of EA, but still, you know, we can, we can hate on them too. I, I always have time in my calendar for a little bit more. I mean, you know, we sometimes hate a little bit on Take Two, but Take Two does Grand Theft Auto, and they're pretty good at that. So we give them a free pass. But maybe we can sort of look at what is the crossover between all of these companies that we're hating on? Well, the crossover, dear Stewie, would be that all of you have collectively ruined the gaming industry. You have taken phenomenal IPs, and you've completely destroyed them. You have taken IPs that we were all in love with and we all wanted to see succeed and you have managed to turn them into dredge just every year. A new Assassin's Creed and they just keep getting worse. Every fucking, every once in a while a new Far Cry and they just keep getting worse. From EA side, they have screwed up Battlefield so much that I don't think that's ever coming back. Uh, they've screwed up uh, FIFA FC 2025 now is launched uh, to mix reviews. I discussed this last week. So fundamentally, if we start putting all of your work collectively together, do you maybe see a trend uh, existing here? Because all of you have gone balls deep onto the DI woke bullshit. Just all of you head first into the, the DI woke stuff. But of course, there can be no connection here. But all right, Stewie goes on and he says, even though it is always the vocal minority that express themselves on social media, I was hurt, hurt and ashamed to be a part of this community. You are not a part of this community, Stewie. Go fuck yourself. 
We don't want you. We disown you. You're not a gamer. You you are not a gamer, Stewie. Yeah, yeah. You you don't have to be a, ashamed of being part of this community. You were never a part of this community to begin with. But let's just quickly see, shall we? Um, how minority is this minority or this vocal minority group actually? Like, is this the minority or is it not? Well, we can take a quick gander over here at Starfield and see that Starfield, this little bump here, by the way, that you can't see because my camera is in the way, but this little bump right there, right? You see that barely noticeable little bump right there? That was the launch of the newest DLC for Starfield. As you can see, Starfield has not been garnering new players at all. And it went from 14,000 to 21,000 to 15,000 in, what, less than a week. <laughs> so Starfield isn't doing well. This is one of those games that launched with a bunch of woke bullshit. And of course, the, the studio, Bethesda, knowing better than the gamers what the gamers actually want. But let's take a gander at maybe another game, shall we? Here we have a game right in keeping with old Ubisoft and their political messaging, and what we find is uh, not many people playing it. In fact, we can go to Ubisoft's own uh, newest game, Star Wars Outlaws, again a game that's very politically driven, and one of those games where us vocal minority gamers uh, were not too happy with the game, and it, it seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. Now, of course, everyone pretends they don't know why it's getting worse, but then we can look at Concord. You can't find Steam charts for it because this game was cancelled barely two weeks after it debuted. We can look at Diablo 4, another game from one of these more hated companies, Blizzard Entertainment. And uh, not even this is doing too good on Steam. Now, it is worth noting that Diablo 4 is also on Battle.net. And I think most of its players would probably be playing it on Battle.net because for a long time, Blizzard didn't release their games on Steam. So gamers might actually be you know, just not interested. But this is what happens when you shoehorn your politics into every element of the game. Now, with Diablo 4, it's probably not even fair to put Diablo 4 here because it's not that political. It's more just that the game launched very shit. But the reason I included this is to, because, I mean, Ubisoft's games continuously launch with game-breaking bugs, the game not living up to expectations, the game isn't polished. It's basically sort of like, a, let's launch it and fix it in post. But then let's take a look very quickly here, Stewie, at games that launched that could be considered by many as highly left-wing games. But these are games that don't force their politics down your throat. These are games where the politics are there, and if you are more left-leaning, you're more than welcome to engage with its more left-leaning political stuff. But it also has the opposite. You can go for the more conservative way of playing, the more conservative story delivery. So you're basically offering the gamer an absolute choice to approach the game in whichever way they feel comfortable and or comfortable. I don't know what the hell I was trying to say there, but Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate launched in a phenomenal, phenomenal state. I mean, so few bugs in this game. You can see there almost a million all-time peak players and still, months after its launch, it still has 43,000 people playing it at the moment, like as of 20 minutes ago. Then we can go to Cyberpunk 2077. I choose these two games specifically because they are what the woke likes to use as examples of how it's not the woke stuff that's failing, but the difference between Cyberpunk and also Baldur's Gate and something like Star Wars Outlaws, something like Assassin's Creed. In Assassin's Creed Shadows, if you don't want to engage with its more left-wing biased politics, and last week we, we did a video that showcased just how a lot of this stuff was forced into the game. There's even a rumor going around now, but of course I don't want to cover this rumor actually because it genuinely is just a rumor. But the rumor actually says that Yasuke, the, the, the samurai, that they decided to use was originally a Japanese samurai. And then when the George Floyd stuff happened and the BLM riots happened, uh, Ubisoft saw an opportunity to really profit on this new division. And so they decided to make Yasuke a black guy instead. 
but there's no actual confirmation of this. Uh, but you can't escape it, right? That's the problem in games that Ubisoft is making. That's the problem with games like EA and companies like Activision and the games that these companies make. You cannot escape the politics. Whereas in Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate, you can. You just don't engage with it. You don't want to do homosexual relationships? Well, then just don't romance the guys in the game, right? You want to do homosexual relationships? Then romance the guys in the game. You, you want to side with one person over another? Sure, kill the one and side with the other. It's your game. Choose how you want to play. The game basically just offers a bunch of choice, and that's the end of it. Uh, fundamentally, you, you can't get away from this stuff. Starfield had pronouns in it. Ubisoft games, whenever you can choose, will have pronouns in it. Concord had massive pronouns. Every character they had in that had pronouns. Now, you might be saying, but Aklon, really? Pronouns? That's what you're going to complain about? Pronouns? That's like the least interesting thing to complain about. And to that, I will say, you're right. I don't genuinely, like, the things that I have wrong or that I dislike about Starfield isn't its pronouns. I didn't even focus on the pronouns when I made the game because it automatically chose he uh, for my male character. But that's not the point. The point is it signals a an intent that you almost know will run its course throughout the whole of the game. The fact that they thought that this must be in the game, the fact that they thought that pronouns is an important thing to include in the game, shows you that that political thinking, the way of thinking in that political avenue, will find its way into the rest of the game. You will uncover things in the game, things will be said in the game, that will be more left-wing, and Starfield is full of examples like that. Ubisoft games, I'm sure, is full of stuff. Like I've, I've heard a couple of things about Star Wars Outlaws and the stuff that is said there. And of course, you have games like Dustborn that is just basically made for it. So fundamentally, when it comes to Stewie and the stuff that Stewie is, uh, is saying here, it's, it's interesting that Stewie doesn't seem to understand just how stupid he sounds. The fact that he keeps saying that we are the minority, and yet this is how their games perform. This is the evidence, if ever evidence needed to be provided, that this community isn't as vocal as they might think. But anyways, it goes on. He says, what is even more revolting is coming on LinkedIn and seeing the same comments from people within the industry. I can tell you guys, I've received a couple of emails from industry veterans, people who work in the industry and have worked in the industry for a long time, and um, they've reached out. They, they want to sit down uh, in a podcast format and talk about the stuff that's gone on within the gaming industry to give a bit, of a, bit, a bit more of insight into just how bad things have become. We know that there are multiple developers that are starting to speak out, developers that have had enough of the political bullshit within the video game industry and of course, Stewie will never be able to see this because as you can see, Stewie just freshly came out of uh, the, the, the propaganda center that is called college. Uh, on top of exposing yourself as a clearly non-decent human, now of course, that he's talking about gamers here, you are affecting thousands of employees that are already impacted by all the hate despite doing their best to deliver incredible experiences. Fuck you, Stewie. And you know what? If you're a developer that works for Ubisoft, and you are responsible for some of the bullshit in the game, fuck you too. I hope you lose your job. I hope this company goes bankrupt. If you're one of the developers that have fought tooth and nail to try and fix these studios from within, I commend you for your fighting spirit, but I think it's time to get off the sinking ship. These ships cannot be righted. They must be destroyed. The only way for us to fix the gaming industry is to burn it to the ground. In this instance, me and Sweet Baby Inc. actually agree, although I believe that forest fires are good for life to spring forth, whereas SBI wants to do something completely different. But fundamentally, um, I don't care. If there are developers inside these companies that have made pushes for the woke bullshit in their games, they should lose their jobs. And if that makes me heartless, so be it. I don't care. I don't think that they deserve to have jobs in the gaming industry go into banking. It is a prerequisite that you are hated 
when you're in the banking sector. So go work there. Get out of our video games because you're not gamers. You're political activists, actually failed political activists, because you haven't been able to release a single successful political activist piece in forever. You just keep destroying our video games. We don't want you. Um, how can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you or that the product does not please you is beyond me? Dude, you're not catering to fucking anyone. What the hell are you, Stewie? You're supposed to be a director at Ubisoft. Who are you catering for, you piece of crap? Like, I don't understand this. You make a claim, right, that how can you wish a company fail? How can I wish a company to fail just because they're not catering to me? Your job is to make video games that I want to play. You're not making video games that I want to play set in IPs that I do want video games in that I can play because there used to be games in these IPs that I wanted to play, and now there isn't. So, Stewie... Who are you making these games for? Because it doesn't seem like it's for anyone. Your game barely managed to sell a million copies. And of that, everyone seems to be downvoting it. I wouldn't be surprised if most of those people, the only reason they can't give the game back is because it's outside the refund window. But, you know, never mind that. Uh, I, the fact that Stewie can even ask this, how can we reach a company to fail? Easy. This company is no longer useful. Um, we are all in the same boat. Please, please, please stop spreading hate. We should all uplift each other instead of... No! Stewie, no. You do not get to be uplifted, you piece of crap. You only deserve to be torn, to be torn down. Because that is what you are good for. You have destroyed the gaming industry, you and your ilk. And you continue to do so. You continue to take valuable dollars that could have been spent on good games and making your political drivel. So you know what, Stewie? Ladies and gentlemen, as always, hit the like if you like, just like if you didn't, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace!